today what I was trying to share with the audience was some, some thinking and some insights around um, what it takes to build partnerships that will, in, in, in the mutual sense of the word, be regarded as successful and winning. Uh, and ultimately that comes down, of course, to the, commercial of, uh, the conversion of intent into commercial value. Uh, so what I was sharing today was um, the way in which Unilever uh, partners. Why would we need to partner? When I joined Unilever, Unilever had all of these brands in its portfolio. Some of you will recognize some of these brands. Quest International, Big Flavor House, Flavor and Fragrances. Lotus Crocklan, Oil Milling and Refining. Hmm? Many, many more. Unilever was more vertically integrated when I joined than it is today. Not my fault, just a fact of life. Industry has changed. Now we're much more focused on the brands. Guess what? You need to make products. You need technology, you need supply chain. So if, if you're less vertically integrated, but you still want to be intimate with those supply chain partners and those value chain partners, then you're gonna to have to build relationships with them. So one of the reasons you need to partner is to maintain a very good degree of pseudo vertical integration. A very, very sober left brain thinking. In this world of open innovation that, that many of us are being exposed to all the time, and these are charts that you don't need to read the details on because you'll have seen them all before, the big word was out there saying, you know, it's not all going on in the corporate R&D labs. A lot of it's happening outside. So we've now got one message saying, if you want to be integrated with the value chain, you better get out there and partner. We've got another message saying, you know what? Doing it inside your own organization and throwing more and more money at it isn't going to solve the challenges of R&D and innovation. It all tells us one thing. Get out there, get into the real world, and start working more closely with other people. And the way in which we link our needs to our choices of who to partner with um, to maximize the likelihood that if we co-create together with a partner that it will indeed go through to market and create value. Who in the world is the best, not the second best, but the very best with whom we could partner to build options for the future in that space? Then away we go. So in the context of that, what we'll do is we'll put together a mixture of ad hoc and strategic partnerships and they will have a very broad nature, you know. The, the, the things we're looking for from partners are very broad and very varied. If we want to be selling ice creams with ears, then we better go to Walt Disney, because Mickey Mouse has ears. So if we have technology that makes it possible to build incredible shapes into ice cream, the relevance of that in an alliance with Walt Disney is huge. Right? So there we have access to a different market than we would normally have access to through the type of partner we work with. Equally. There are things like hard assets, you know. He's already built the factory, why would I build another one? Um, thinking about the real challenges that the planet faces. You know, our brands, we have a lot of brands um, consumed every day all around the world, and they have an important role to play in society. And so therefore, the, um, the strategy of the company behind those brands is very important in terms of determining the future of those brands and the role they will continue to play in society. And, and I think the thinking is that if we're playing the right role, uh, in a societal t sense, as a, as a healthy company, then we will grow and we will be successful. And, and moreover then, we, um, as a winner, then um, we will be attractive to those around us to work with. Because uh, everybody wants to be part of a winning team. Today we have a strategy, actually set a few years ago now, by our CEO Paul Polman, that's all about doubling Unilever without increasing the environmental impact at all. Well, I don't know whether any of you can figure out how to do that in your organization. How can you double huh, your company without impacting the environment even more than you do today? Pretty big challenge. And when the challenge was put out, pretty much everybody in Unilever said, what? You know, everybody pretended they understood it. But we secretly looked at each other and said, this is going to be fun. So we're just a few years down the track now. Here we are. And actually, on the track of doubling the company, we're on track. The, uh, the communication to consumers around liquid washing agents is that you now have a concentrate. Yeah? So there's a very simple communication. You need to carry less product home in order to do the wash. But of course, it's also true that if a product occupies half of the physical space, then it occupies half the physical space in trucks. Uh, if at the same time the amount of water that's needed to, you know, to, to work with the product can be reduced, then you start to have a big impact. So I think you know, a key part of what, what is happening is about understanding the way in which we can achieve the sustainability objectives 
in a way that is understood by consumers and is it compelling to consumers so they perceive it as, as value, valuable for them whilst it fully delivers on the agenda.